Today we are going to be diving deep into Breaking Bad Season 2, talking about everything that I liked from the series, everything that I remember from the series, because I'm not gonna lie, it has been a long time since I watched it, so I have some notes to go off from of like, the sequence of events that happened, because I have watched the show multiple times, I've kept up on the date, I've just finished watching Better Call Saul, so I am, I have, I have enough memory through this to talk about the entire series, because this has been one of my favorite TV shows of all time. I think just off the top of my head, Game of Thrones and Attack on Titan beat it, maybe Demon Slayer as well, but regardless, I am a huge, huge Breaking Bad fan. We're going to talk about Season 2 today, I'd love to know what you guys think about it down below, Afterwards, hello everybody and welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle. I'm your guy with many YouTube channels. We're going to talk about it in just a second. I know it's a long intro. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but just a heads up. If you haven't seen Breaking Bad, obviously, spoiler alert for Season 2 and Season 1 of Breaking Bad. You know what? Spoilers for all of it because I'm going to talk about it because now that I finished Better Call Saul, brings a whole new meaning to Saul, by the way. So there's also going to be spoilers for Better Call Saul. With all that out of the way, let's get into Season 2. The series starts off with... A pink teddy bear floating around the water, of course, those flash forward things. And I remember like looking at this and it's interesting because I typically haven't broken down things after like I've already watched them. And it's crazy to see that what that became because back in the day I was watching Breaking Bad. Like what was it? It wasn't like 2010. It was around there. I was watching it and every week I had to wait for a new episode. I was watching with my mom. My dad stopped watching it, but I ended up watching the entire series with my mom. We had to watch it week by week on TV. It was horrible compared to today's standards, but <laughs> so we were wondering forever what the pink bear was, and honestly, I had no clue. So right now, the pink bear, we haven't seen too much of it, but the pink bear is there. Nobody knows what to make of it. And of course, we now go into the present of Breaking Bad where Tuco is still in the desert with Walt and Jesse and Tuco's big bad guys. We then are brought back to the present with a crazy scene with Walt, Jesse, Tuco, and his guys all in the field, or in the desert, or the junkyard, excuse me, it's just all sandy, right? But it's what's horrible about Breaking Bad is this show presented some of the greatest memes and underrated humor of all time, and now Tuco has gone from this big, bad, scary drug dealer character to a character that everybody laughs at. Like, Tuco is one of my favorite characters of all time just because of the memes that come from it, right? So it sucks looking back on this situation because when I was watching it, I was like, oh my god, Tuco's a scary dude. But now I look at it and I'm like, oh, that's Tuco. That Tuco doing what Tuco does. So Tuco beats up one of the drug dealers with him because he just looks at Wall and Jesse and goes, yeah, remember who you're working for. And then Tuco's like, you think they don't know that? You think they're stupid? You think I'm stupid? What sucks is it's so funny now. It's so funny. <laughs> but unfortunately, Tuco does end up beating him to death and then makes Walt end up doing CPR. You're smart! Think us, dude! Do the thing! Do the thing! And Tuco's just screaming at him. And Walt's like, no, he needs a hospital. The dude ends up dying and they end up throwing him in the junkyard, right? They're hiding him a little bit. So, now... Continuing on, Skyler ends up finding Walt at a TV and <laughs> that you have the most uncomfortable scene at uh, probably the entire show because I forgot about this. And in preparation for this video, I ended up watching Beat Rice, which is an incredible channel, by the way, really dives into the humor of Breaking Bad. And Walt ended up just forcing himself on Skyler because he found out like he was still having that adrenaline rush. Walt is feeling like the man, right? And then he ends up just assaulting Skyler, which is horrible, horrible. And in hindsight, this is when we should have all turned on Walter because after the series is over, we all know that Walter's a horrible, horrible, bad guy, right? He forces himself on Skyler and everybody's still like, oh my God, Skyler, what a, you know, <laughs> it's crazy to me, dude. Absolutely crazy. But we end, Walter ends up going to sit by a pool by himself to kind of just like he, he kind of takes everything in. I don't know if he's necessarily self-reflecting. So other than that, they end up getting worried, Walt and Jesse, that Tuco is going to kill him because Tuco just offed one of his guys. Jesse ended up buying a handgun, and he ends up bringing it to Walt and kind of shows him the gun, even though Walter doesn't really want Jesse around, but they're both worried that Tuco's going to end up killing him. So I'm moving on. We still have that whole plot line with Skylar ignoring calls from Marie, and it, Hank ends up arguing about therapy. There's nothing really to take away there. Nobody really cares too much about that. So Jesse ends up believing that Tuco is a threat. And like I said, he ends up going to Walter's house and Walter says to deal with Tuco and Walter ends up taking his own gun. 
After that, though, this is just all setting stuff up. Anyways, Hank and Gomez were brought back to the DEA office, and Hank and Gomez end up watching the robbery that Walt and Jesse did. And it's funny because you, you see all these plot points throughout the show because after everything gets revealed to us, they're setting this up, right, for Hank to find out. Hank is just laughing at these idiots there like it's a barrel. It rolls, and then he doesn't know that he's actually dealing with, like, such a smart guy. And then sometimes Walt and Jesse do these, like, absolutely ridiculous things. <laughs> but... Other than that, there's not too much to take away from that, right? So we're then brought towards the end of the episode when Hank and Gomez go to the crime scene. I actually don't remember off the top of my head how they ended up finding out about that crime scene, but it doesn't really matter. They end up going, they find out Tuco's drug dealer's body. Hank calls Walt and he's like, hey, you want to see something cool? Sends a picture. Walt goes into a little bit of a freak out. They, things get escalated a little bit. Walt thinks that Tuco's going to kill Jesse and Walt, and to be fair, it's an understandable take, to be honest with you. And <laughs> so Tuco ends up grabbing Jesse and he ends up getting he ends up getting Walter to come outside even after he is having this horrible situation with Skylar in his house. They go up, Tuco ends up going outside, he goes get in the car, Jesse is driving the car, Tuco ends up being in the back seat, Walter ends up having to get in the car after leaving Skylar after having this really, really tense discussion. We are then brought into the next episode where Tuco ends up taking Walt and Jesse to a remote desert hideout at gunpoint. They, it's a very, very tense situation. What's funny is, and I know that so many people look back on this, right? And the, they were actually going to end up killing Jesse around this point, but Jesse ended up becoming such a fan favorite character that they kept him around. Like, could you imagine Breaking Bad without Jesse? I couldn't. It's He's such an integral part of the story, right? So anyways... At the hideout, we are now introduced to Hector Salamanca, and again, memes have completely ruined this entire thing because it's such a situation where it's like, what's going to happen to Walt? What's going to happen to Jesse? Well, who's this Hector guy, right? Even he had his own little, like, worry to him a little bit. I know he was an old man, but it's like, you don't mess with the family. That was kind of all over there, and now we've had so many bell memes, so many Tuco yelling memes that it's just completely taken away from the entire time, right? So... We then see Tuco having this nice relationship, well, nice, with Hector. He's, he's feeding him. He's tending to him. He's, like, talking like, oh, my God, I'm okay. I'm okay over here. Then we're introduced to the bell, right? And if I'm not mistaken, wasn't there something that they teased the bell about earlier? But I don't really remember. Okay, so after that, Tuco ends up realizing after a little bit of conversation that uh, the DEA has targeted his organization. They are going to have a new operation over in Mexico. This really sends Walt into a, no, I have a family. I have a family. It's okay. And then Tuco ends up telling Jesse to shut up. And that's another thing that's just hilarious about this whole thing. Anytime Jesse ever says anything, just shut up. And he says something along the lines of, you better hope that they have end up room, having room in the trunk. But even though Walt protests a little bit, Walt wants his to visit his family. Walt says he can't leave. Tuco doesn't care. He's sticking around. They're going to, the cousins are coming and we didn't know that the cousins were those cousins, right? So they then end up remembering that they have the ricin with them, Walt and Jesse. And what's funny about it is they all the different times that they try to get the ricin in there. It starts off with some new, like some part, I think, it, I can't remember if it was crystal or crystal powder, whatever they called it. But <laughs> what's funny is Tuco was about to try it. And then they were obviously going to kill Tuco. But Jesse ends up going, yeah, this new flavor, chili powder. I hate chili. Just throws it back at him. And Walt's like looking at Jesse like, really? <laughs> so then they have this entire sequence of events where they end up having dinner. Tuco needs them to eat because, of course, they're going to Mexico. They have a long trip ahead of them. They better hope Jesse has room in the trunk. They end up sneaking the ricin into the taco. And Hector sees them do so. Hector ends up getting the switch up. And Tuco gets mad at Hector because he won't eat. Knocks the thing off. But Hector's trying to save them. <laughs> Which is hilarious, by the way. Not that we all thought that Hector was about to get killed, or we didn't know him necessarily as Hector right now, right? But then Tuco ends up figuring out where it's like, oh my god, are these guys punking me? And then Hector, bingo. And then Tuco ends up threatening to kill Walt and Jesse, knocks him outside, beats up Jesse. And then he's like, oh, tell me what you did, Walter. And then Walter calls him. And again, the only reason, reason I remember this is because of the memes. You're a degenerate piece of filth, and you deserve to die. <laughs> so as Tuco is about to kill them, Jesse ends up finding a brick and knocks Tuco out. Ends up flying in a hole. Doesn't kill Tuco, but Walt and Jesse are ending up able to make their escape. So 
continuing on, even though, I don't know if it was necessarily before that or throughout the episode, but it doesn't really matter. Skylar ended up asking Hank to find Walter because Walter just disappeared. They had the conversation. Walter was gone. He got in his car, left. Hank ended up tracing everything into Tuco's hideout because Tuco's, Tuco took Jesse's car. Jesse drove Walter and Tuco out there. And this is where Hank ends up finding Tuco. They have a little bit of shootout. Hank ends up shooting Tuco and Walt and Jesse are watching from a distance. They're, Walt's like, oh my God, that's Hank. And then they end up just absolutely booking it into the desert because of course they can't be found by Hank. Hank ends up saving the day. Walt and Jesse walking out to the desert. We move on to the next episode. We're then brought back into the next episode where Walt and Jesse are stranded in the desert. They're hot. And it's funny how many times this actually ends up happening throughout the entirety of Breaking Bad, right? So they split up. They both end up hitchhiking back to the city. Now, Walt, because he obviously can't go back home and just not explain anything, he invents this fugue state. So he goes into a supermarket, removes his clothes, acts all confused. And you can see in his face where he's like, I can't believe I'm doing this. And then, of course, he ends up in the hospital. Walt ends up claiming memory loss and has to undergo some psychiatric evaluation. And when he's talking to the therapist, he ends up admitting that there's no fugue state. He ended up talking about his son having cerebral palsy. He has cancer. His wife hates him. And he just made that up because he had to get out of there. And it was honestly really smart. And actually, I wonder if that would work in real life. And I was, I've been wondering this throughout like a lot of different things at Breaking Bad. Like, would an RV and a meth lab work? I'd have to ask my dad that because my dad was a police officer, but I don't know if any of this would work. I would imagine people tried this type of stuff after Breaking Bad, but <laughs> I mean, this, it just, it's interesting to me. That's all. I wonder if they, you could go around and just claim like, hey, I'm okay. Just my life sucks. That's all. I had to get out of there. I don't know if that would work, but regardless, we move on to Jesse, who is now at this point, a fugitive, returns home and packs up. All of the equipment with Badger's help. Badger goes crazy. They have a little bit of a fight there, which is a little bit hilarious, but that's not necessarily where we get to yet. So Jesse then allows the DA to find him in a motel room with Wendy, who again is completely memed. And then they were just partying all weekend. They're partying all weekend. Where's my root beer? Where's that root beer? <laughs> so, and then when they all, I don't know if this happened just yet. I might be having the episodes a little bit mixed up, but Hank ends up talking to Jesse and Wendy, and it ends up getting kind of scrapped because Wendy just goes, I remember you. You're the one who wanted me to do that kid. <laughs> Can I have my root beer now? And just Wendy ended up kind of saving the day. That was Jesse's average IQ moment, I guess you could say. It wasn't really a too good of a plan, but what was there? You, what were you supposed to do? He's like, yeah, DEA, you found my car. Like, he's just obviously not fooling anybody, right? So Hector ends up calling the DEA and just ends up crapping himself. And <laughs> after that, Jesse, and this is where he talks to the DEA because Jesse ended up getting released and Hank was like, found all this money. This isn't your money. And Jesse had to end up being no. So Jesse ends up broke, but he gets released. The DEA's still watching him, still suspicious, but he isn't a criminal exactly. Walt ends up at the end of the episode convincing Jesse to continue cooking meth, saying, what's changed, Jesse? What's changed? Jesse needs money. Walt needs money. They're seemingly back in the business. We are then moving on to another episode where you just feel so bad for Jesse. So Jesse, having no money and facing eviction from his parents, spends the night in his hidden RV after he had his motorbike stolen. It's just the entire episode of Jesse just going completely downhill. The last time I watched this show, I watched it first with my mom, then I rewatched it with my sister, and I watched it for the third time about a year ago, maybe a little bit more than a year ago with my wife and the entirety of this entire show, she just kept saying, poor Jesse, oh, poor Jesse. And I'm just sitting here like, oh my God, it gets so much worse. So <laughs> we then have a little bit of pause with Jesse, right? Because Jesse's just going through all of these unfortunate events. Skylar ends up becoming suspicious yet again of Walt's behavior, including his denial of owning a second cell phone. And she starts playing the game that Walter was playing and just going out saying, I'm going out. Where are you going, Skylar? Out. Or maybe I'm not. Maybe I just had a fugue state. You know, Skylar just doesn't believe anything he says at all. And Walter doesn't like that Skylar's playing the same game. And what's crazy is, again, looking back on this series, Skylar, a complete victim to all of this, we go, oh my God, what a horrible wife Skylar is. It's just 
it's because the story is obviously told from the perspective of Walter, right? <laughs> it's it's just crazy to look back on that, right? So Walt continues to deny any wrongdoing when Skylar, he, she keeps confronting him about it. They have this big moment where Walter ends up going, tell you what, you know, like there's nothing already, there's nothing new there, but it's continuing to build, right? So Jesse ends up having still the horrible entire situation that's been happening to Jesse. He steals his RV from the impound after sleeping in it, falling through a porta potty, ends up covered in disgusting, disgusting residue. And Jesse ends up convincing Walt to give Jesse half the remaining money after kind of just harassing him the entire time. And you know what? I understand it from Walter's perspective and I understand it from Jesse's perspective. But at the end of the day, Jesse's the one who got his money taken away. But Tuco's... <sighs> Tuco's the reason for that because Tuco took Jesse's car. Tuco brought it all over. Tuco's the one who kind of brought the entire situation of the DEA up, right? So it's it, Walt doesn't have to because it still is Walter's money, but it's just unfortunate that Jesse was there. It's just the right thing to do is Walter split the money. But Walter, of course, is greedy, selfish, and he wants the money for his family. So it's a little bit of a less selfish motivation there. Regardless, Walt should have given Jesse the money at the beginning. Jesse would have been relentless either way, knowing Jesse's character. <laughs> so ends up he ends up giving Jesse a little bit of money to get by. We then move on to the next episode titled Breakage, and we find out that Walt's health has actually been improving, but he worries about the continuing medical bills that are coming, so he really, really wants to start cooking meth again, right? So Jesse, on the other hand, actually starts rebuilding his life. He's paying off debts, and he wants to find a new place to live. He seems to actually have a little bit of motivation for once through the entire series, now, Jesse ends up finding a new place to live, and this is where we are introduced to Jane and the DBAA rule. Jesse ends up t t telling her that his name is Jesse Jackson, and it, it, you can already see from the way they presented Jane and the way Jesse was looking at her. He's very, very interested in her. We then have a couple of plot points where Hank and the DEA find out about the name Heisenberg going around. They find out that like Heisenberg's this ultra cook person, right? And other than that, Skylar and Marie end up making up and Walt and Jesse decide to resume cooking meth. Not a lot to take away from that entire situation besides when they start elevating their entire process where Jesse wants to suggest that they take over Tuco's role as distributors to increase profits. Jesse ends up recruiting his friends, which in hindsight, this isn't necessarily a good idea. It's Combo, Skinny Pete, and Badger. Yeah, they're trustworthy to Jesse, but they are not nearly as careful as Walter is. I can see... But at the end of the day, it's a lot safer than Walt and Jesse were doing, right? It's a lot safer than Jesse going out. They want to be good than the new Tuco. Now that Tuco's gone, there's there's room for improvement in there. Plus, they have the pri they have the best product there is out there. It's the best thing they could have done. But I, it's tough. If you're Walter's, if you're Walter, I think the best way to go about it was to continue having Jesse fling it all out. But then again, they're maximizing profits this way. So I don't know. Depends on. Yeah, maybe they did do the right thing. I don't know. I don't know. It's tough to say. Anyways, we find out then that Skinny Pete ends up getting ripped off after they have all of this success. Just they're increasing their price. The business is going good. But then Skinny Pete ends up getting ripped off by some drug addicts. You know, the skank, skank, skankity skank people, right? <laughs> and of course, Jesse ends up unfortunately talking about having a reputation. This is what Walt's really worried about. And this is where they have this really, really bad conversation they meet up to exchange money right and jesse ends up being a little bit low on walt but walt doesn't or jesse doesn't see why walt is concerned about one of his guys getting ripped off because this isn't what tuco would do you need to do what tuco did you can't let your guys rip it off you need to go get your money back you need to build a reputation and honestly walter's right if you are in this business plus they kind of deserve it <laughs> they kind of deserve it if they're gonna rob and like take some method that's not theirs they're not paying for it right i know it's an entire illegal business but at the end of the day these people absolutely absolutely deserve it so walt tells jesse he needs to do what tuco does and this is where we are led to the next episode peekaboo but before we get into that we find out that walt ends up returning to work right we're back into walter's life over here but we don't know that jesse is on his way to actually do what tuco would do now we are also brought back into the entire situation with Gretchen because she visits Walter's home where Skylar ends up thanking Gretchen for paying for the treatment and Gretchen's kind of like, whoa, 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 whoa. They end up having lunch and this is where another meme was born, the one where it goes, fuck you. And Walter was just a horrible, horrible, you know what? 
I was always confused about is because I'm just going to get a little bit more comfortable, guys. I'm sorry. I've been recording for a little while. I've been recording on my other channels, too. I'm a little bit confused if we ever found out that Walt was actually ripped off and kicked out from the company. I haven't done too much research into it, but I feel like I would have known. I feel like I would have known at this point, right? So maybe it was just Walter being bitter that he ended up leaving because that was the story, right? He ended up taking a buyout. That's what he told Jesse at the end of the series. But then Walt's just angry at them. Walt is being absolutely ridiculous. Gretchen's like, why would you lie to them about this? Uh, we're not paying for your treatment. And Walter's just like, I don't know you an explanation for anything. Walter's just being this horrible guy. And I understand that Walter can't exactly tell her what's going on. But at least at some point you could just say, look, I found this other way. Even if you want to come up with like a gambling type story, I'm sure there's some way that you could talk around it without leading to just fuck you, you know? <laughs> I And the problem is this show has been so ruined by memes that I laugh at this really, really tense and deep moment. I really like Gretchen, man. It's it's too bad that they didn't end up getting a little bit more of a, a more of a role here. But then again, they they did play a really good part. I would just like to see their past expressed a little bit more, right? After that, we are then brought down to Walter going back to the house with Skylar. He ends up talking to Skylar, saying that they're not going to pay for anything anymore, and just claiming that Gretchen and Elena broke there. They're very pride people, Skylar. They're very pride pe They're very pride and powerful people. They don't want to admit that they lose anything. And Walter's coming out of this like smart and humble guy. Skylar is an idiot and ends up buying what he's saying. But then we are finally brought back to Jesse and the name of the episode, which being Peekaboo. Jesse is at the house going, "Where's my money, bitch? Where's my? Where's my? Where's my money, bitch? Bitch? Where's my money?" And it's just again another meme, which is absolutely hilarious. We're then brought through this entire episode where Jesse ends up actually breaking in, holding him at gunpoint. Jesse, being inherently a good character, feels really, really bad for the kid. He hides the kid. You have this entire episode where Jesse ends up getting knocked out and he has to end up <laughs> he has to end up submitting to these drug addicts, but then one kills the other one for going or skank, and I think it was like what, 40 times? He's skank, 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 skank. And then she ends up going, I ain't no skank. And just crushes the dude with an ATM. And I forgot to mention that they had an ATM in there. They've also stolen an ATM. And they're trying to take all the cash from it. Jesse ends up retrieving the meth and the cash from the ATM. Once it actually ends up opening. Calls the police. Wraps the boy in a blanket. Cares for him. And has in some point during the episode. He ends up playing peekaboo with the kid. That's what the name was. And Jesse. We really end up getting a little bit more in depth to his character. Jesse. And this is something that will continue throughout the entire series. Jesse really, really has a heart for children. He's, it's too bad that he ended up becoming what he became, right? Because Jesse is inherently a good person. He never wants to kill anybody. He just wants to make his money. I still disagree with it. He's still a bad guy for doing that. But of course, he is inherently a good person, if you know what I mean. So Jesse ends up taking off. The police are coming. The kid is suggested to be saved. We are then brought into the next episode where Walt has trouble reaching Jesse because Jesse just absolutely started isolating himself from the world completely after the entire situation with Spooge. That's his name, Spooge. <laughs> Sorry, slipped my mind a little bit. So Jesse ended up, because he is just completely uh, isolating himself from the world, he's not supplying product to his dealers. So Walter steps in and decides to deliver it himself. And this is where we end up, Heisenberg ends up coming up in the public for the first time because they're like, oh, you're, you're the guy? You're the cook? You're Heisenberg? This is crazy. And now, of course, Walter ends up suggesting, because the rumor came out that Jesse squashed that dude's head with the vending machine, Walter doesn't say anything and just goes, which is an absolute genius on Walter's part. So word spreads that Jesse ended up killing Splooge. Now he has a new brand new reputation as this cold-blooded killer that Walter put it. And everybody has just been paying up. Business has been super, super easy. Now, Walter, because he is greedy and horrible, wants to expand his territory and capitalize on the brand new reputation that Jesse has. And little do we know, or it's not difficult to figure out, this is going to lead into some trouble. Now, we are also in this episode introduced to Ted Beneke. Good old Ted, right? Good old Ted. Skylar just decides to go back to her old job and it's kind of, kind of insinuated that her and Ted end up having a history. I don't recall if Ted and her were ever in a relationship. But it doesn't matter. We have Ted. You know that there's something going on between the two. Jesse and Jane continue to bond. They end up liking each other. They have that little moment behind the TV, right? And, of course, 
Hank ends up getting a job in El Paso as not the big boss, but he was kind of tagging around for the new crew. And he's having trouble because he's having flashbacks to Tuco and he's kind of just being seen as an outsider in the entire group. He's the only one that speaks English, right? And of course, continuing on, we they end up having an investigation and the task force that Hank is part of ended up finding that man with their head on the turtle and it just exploded. Hank, as far as I remember, Hank was the only one to survive there. And yeah, there's bringing on more PTSD for Hank in the coming story. He talks it out with Hank a little bit, or excuse me, Walter talks it out with Hank a little bit, but it doesn't really fix too much. And after this, we are brought back to Jane and Jesse who continue to build their relationship. They end up having a sexual relationship and Jesse ends up learning about Jane's recovery. Excuse me, because my H-E-Y Google is writing down everything I say for some reason. Now, <laughs> I didn't want to start repeating to me or searching something up. So Jesse ends up finding out that Jane is what? It was 18 months clean or something along those lines, right? Now, Badger ended up getting arrested by the police, posing a problem for Walt and Jesse. And what's very, very, very fun is it's going... Wait, is this the time we're... Oh, yes, Badger was arrested because of the flower van that was pretty funny looking back on to be honest with you they end up having that whole i thought that was the start of the episode to be honest with you maybe i'm just maybe i'm just uh remembering all of this incorrectly or my notes are kind of all over the place over here but badger ends up getting arrested after saying i swear i am not a police officer right <laughs> they need to get badger out though because they can't have this happen walt can't get exposed and walt will do anything at this point to hide himself so they end up getting this brand new shady lawyer better call Saul. They hire Saul Goodman and it's crazy looking back on this after everything that we've seen from better call Saul, because you look at him as not a sleazy lawyer. You look at him as like the broken, broken, horrible character that he is putting on a reputation, putting on a show. He is a deeply troubled individual. And after everything that he went through, it's insane, right? So he ends up getting he ensures here excuse me once they start talking to Saul they end up ensuring that Badger will receive a light sentence without revealing Walt or Jesse's identities and Saul ends up and what's funny we hear about this from Better Call Saul is Saul end up using Mike who found Walter was very very easy to track <laughs> so Saul ended up going up to Walter's school Walter ends up freaking out right now, Walter, or excuse me, Saul ends up telling Walter that he wants to be a small and silent cut of the project that he has going on. And what's crazy too is Mike ended up telling Walt to stay away from this guy. He didn't say that that wasn't the ticking time bomb line, but he's like, I don't like this guy. He's going to get caught and you don't want to be part of it. And Saul, Saul, motivated by money, wants to be part of it, right? And the little slip and Jimmy part kind of comes out of him. He wants, he probably wants the trouble as well. What's crazy, so... Walt ends up considering taking on Saul. Saul knows who Walter is. Saul knows what everything is about. And Saul wants to be a silent part of the cut. After not much consideration at all, Walt ends up actually working with Saul, who ends up doing the calculations and finds out that after everything, Walter won't exactly have a lot to leave for his family. And Walt is in a little bit of a hurry because Walter started coughing up blood. Walter thinks his symptoms of his medical condition are getting worse and worse. So he really, really needs to make, he really needs to cook more. He ends up, and this is where some of the most horrible moments of the show back out in the desert. They don't get there yet, but Walt lies and decides to tell Skylar that he's going to go visit his mom because he's worried that he's going to die, but he didn't exactly say that. Skylar ended up figuring it out. So he planned an entire cooking session over the weekend. And this is where one of the most iconic scenes of Breaking Bad happens. They end up cooking. They end up doing great. They end up ready to go home. And Jesse ends up leaving the keys in the ignition. And this is... <laughs> I wanted to leave them on the counter. Bitch, you know, it's it was just so funny. So then we're brought into the entire horrible episode of them being stranded out in the desert, right? Jesse ends up finding... Is this... Yeah, this is where Jesse ends up finding that Walt ended up having cancer because... Jesse's grandma or someone ended up, he, she ended up dying and then she found out like a little bit of a patch on the chest, right? So Walt ended up, of course, saving the day as usual after some horrible sequences of them thinking that they're going to die. Walter kind of sucking in himself, being mad at Jesse. Walt ended up making a battery to jumpstart the RV. And then they return to Albuquerque. Walt and Skyler discover after they all end up being okay, Walter ends up getting back from the trip. Walt ends up that he's actually okay, and this is where the new meme comes in where Walt starts punching, punching the entire air dryer thing because Walt actually 
wanted to die, but he's actually in remission. Well, the family ends up throwing a party because Walt ends up being in remission, right? Walter is very, very unhappy about this. He gets a little too drunk at the party, ends up feeding shots to Walter Jr., telling him to drink, saying, my house, my son, and ends up having the Heisenberg come out of him a little bit after drinking a little too much, ends up arguing with Hank, not too much to take away from there, feeling embarrassed about it, Walter ends up just going to Hank, apologizing for his actions, everything's all good there, Walter then ends up talking to Jesse about his improved health condition, and that he is done cooking meth, he wants out, and there's, this isn't the first time that they ended up being out, right, but in the meantime, Skylar ends up getting a little too close to Ted, Skylar, that horrible, horrible wife, and you know what, I'm still of the opinion, guys, no matter what, you leave the person that you're with before you start cheating, besides flirting, and I don't care, flirting's cheating, anybody who says otherwise is completely incorrect, and probably flirting with other people, and probably unfaithful in their own relationship, anyways, speaking of relationships, Jane and Jesse continue to have their relationship just absolutely blossom, everything ends up being peachy, they love each other, right, but Jane's dad ends up coming over, and Jesse <laughs> tries like, oh my god, I'm Jesse. And the father gets suspicious. Jane pretends to not know who he was. They are getting really, really heated. So they're, they have their first little relationship fight, right? And it's, they don't know if they, did they ever specify if they were together or not? I don't really recall. It doesn't really matter because they ended up being A-OK -okay in the end. They ended up loving each other. They end up starting their relationship. But in the meantime, we have the next episode where Combo ends up, because he expanded his territory a little bit, ends up getting murdered by a little kid. <laughs> and then it was crazy as we find out later on who this little kid is, right? After that, Saul ends up, and there's this whole horrible thing where Walter just doesn't care, right? Doesn't care at all who Combo is because Jesse called him. He's like, Combo's dead. And Walter's like, which one's that? <laughs> Jesse's like, you did not seriously just say that. So <laughs> Saul ends up talking about the guy who knows a guy, right? Who knows another guy. And then ends up like, he ends up talking about Gus Fring, right? So in the meantime, Walter ends up having a meetup with Gus who, what's funny looking back on this is because we see Walter and Gus like hanging around each other. Gus is just working, ends up hiding in plain sight, right? Walter's waiting all day for him, all day for him, goes back another day. Then he ends up asking Gus Fring, please, or no, that's not, that's not the time, because I was thinking it was the meme, it was the meme where it's like, <laughs> hi, what can I get for you, Gus Fring, why is bro trying to order Gus Fring, like, it's just, this show has been memed to death, man, it's horrible, but he ends up asking Gus for a moment of his time, and Gus ends up sitting with Walter, and he was interested in working with him, and he doesn't like that Jesse's there, Jesse showed up late, Jesse was high, he doesn't work with drug addicts, understandable for Gus's part, but it's a little shocking that he ended up revealing himself to Walter, which, but maybe it's because Walter ended up noticing him, but I still don't understand. Walter couldn't have been this smart. He figured out who Gus was. I don't think that's possible, man. I think that's the only time where Breaking Bad ended up like really, really breaking the bounds on like what can do. But then again, you have the whole situation where Gus walked away from the bomb. There was a few moments like that or Lalo jumping on the car like Superman. Maybe, but this is a little bit of a stretch in my opinion. Doesn't really matter. We're back to Jane and Jesse who end up using heroin. <laughs> Jesse, I mean Jane, the horrible, horrible influence on Jesse. She's like, let's party. Let's get some heroin after I'm like 18 months cleaner, however long it was, right? And of course, Walter ends up having this short notice phone call where it's like, hey, we have a delivery. You said you had this much to go. We need it delivered in an hour, whatever it was. In the meantime, Skylar is building her relationship with Ted, right? And then she remember, she also figures out that he's been committing tax evasion, which is horrible and doesn't lead to anything bad down the line one little bit, right? Everything's A-OK. -okay. It's Ted's problem. Nobody else's problem. Everything ends up working out with that. So we end, that, end up having the crazy episode where Sky, or Walt gets a text from Skylar saying that the baby's coming. He can't because he needs to get the meth. He needs to do this right away. He ends up going to Jesse's house finding them both just completely cracked out on heroin. But Walter, no matter what, ends up delivering the meth on time and has this crazy, crazy happy moment that he is actually going to be able to provide for his family, right? So Jesse, after that, ends up confronting Walt about his share of the payment, but Walt refuses to give it to Jesse until he ends up being sober. Kind of understandable from Walt's perspective, but at the end of the day, Jesse isn't his son, even though no matter how much Walter tries to act like Jesse then is his son throughout the show, He's doing it for his best interest, right? Perhaps doesn't want Jane to be part of it, which is understandable because Jane is a little a little succubus over there. Jane just wants Jesse for his money because once she sees the money, she's like, we can run away. We can run away after pretending to not know who he was, right? Absolutely crazy. So Donald, who is Jane's father, ends up discovering 
Jesse and Jane's addiction because he shows up. Je Jane ended up missing. I don't remember if it was rehab or something that she was going to do with the building manager because she was also the building manager, I think. It's a, the memory is a little bit fuzzy on that one. So they end up having the entire crazy, crazy scene where Jesse ends up grabbing a bat and he's like, I pay my rent, bitch. I have rights. I have civil rights, right? And Jane ends up crying to her dad, promising to go to rehab first thing in the morning. And for some horrible, stupid reason, Donald decides to believe his daughter. I don't know why he would possibly believe them, but he did. He did. He's going to come back in the morning. They're going to go to rehab. Little does he know what's about to happen. So <laughs> we're then, we then put a little bit of a pause on it because Walter Jr. Eric Saul comes up with the idea. No, Walter Jr. comes up with the idea to create a fake web or not a fake website, a website donate to Walter White. And Walter hates this because it's charity and Walter is making the money for himself. He wants to be the one provide for his family. And I completely understand that, especially because I'm fairly newly married and the my daughter just got here coincidentally a couple days ago. And I have that drive, right? I would hate to be in Walter's position. I would really, really hate that. So I understand it. But at the end of the day, Walter Jr. was just trying to do the best thing possible to help his dad. And Saul saw green lights on that and started ended up having a bunch of fake people donate to save Walter White. And so he's having to sit here in his house, listen to cha-ching and then Skylar and Walter Jr. going, yay, another donation, right? <laughs> Jane ends up blackmailing Walter into giving Jesse part of or his share of the money because of course she would threaten to report everything that's been going on and Walter can't take that. So he ended up delivering the meth over to Jane, but he said something along the lines of nice job wearing the pants and ended up giving it to Jesse instead of Jane. Walter hates Jane, but after that, this is the problem because this is the big, big thing that happened probably in the entire season, right? Walter ended up returning to Jesse's place and this is where he finds both Jesse and Jane passed out on the bed because they decided to have one last night of fun before they escape and live their life together, right? Walter ends up finding them cracked down on heroin, cracked out, ending up high on heroin and Walter watches Jane choke up. She's on her back, vomiting, choking. Walter does nothing. She dies. I'm sitting here going, W, Jane sucks. Jane was horrible. That's okay with me. I'd watch her too. But Walt, <laughs> you know, what's funny is before I continue talking about this is what, like I said, I've been watching this show with my girl and she looked like that. She was like watching TV like this. And then she goes, does Jesse ever find out? And I'm like, <laughs> because in my head, I just see, I watched Jane die. <laughs> so again, taken away from the hard, hard moment over there, Jane ends up dying of suffocation. We're then brought into the final episode of the season where Jesse discovers Jane's passing and reaches out to Walter for help. He has this really, really heartbreaking moment trying to get her to live, but the CPR isn't working. Nothing's working. Walt ends up then contacting Saul, who sends this brand new private investigator, Mike, to, con to conceal Jesse's involvement and kind of just tell him what to say. Get ready for the entire situation that's going to come because the police are going to come. And what's funny is Mike, and I'm sure you guys have heard about this if you're a Breaking Bad fan, Mike was only supposed to be in a couple episodes because the actor who played Saul was unavailable that day. So they just ended up having this like PI guy, right, come over and <laughs> ended up being just amazing character and was part of the reason why Better Call Saul was there. And like, you might not even have had Better Call Saul if it wasn't for Mike, right? But then again, you could just, I don't know. It wouldn't have worked out without Mike. But after that, Jesse is just completely, completely overwhelmed with grief and fleas. He thinks that this entire thing was his problem. It's his fault that Jesse died. So he ends up fleeing to a crack house and Walter ends up finding him. And there's this little bit of a beautiful moment where Jesse starts crying and talks about like, I loved her more than anything. It's my fault. I killed her. And Walter is having this father son moment in the middle of this horrible crack house. And it was a really, really, really sad situation. It's where my girl said to me again, asking if Jesse ever finds out that Walt watched her die, right? <laughs> Walter's funds are then continuously funneled into his son's website. And he ends up getting a little bit more guilty because it, it, the media ended up having all this attention brought back to Walt. People ended up going, Walter Jr. is the saving grace of the household, his poor, poor, sick dad. And Walter's upset because nothing is being like, uh, nothing is being going back to Walt. Walt's the guy actually bringing in the money, right? So Walt ends up continuing his secretive behavior and it, or no, he doesn't continue it. It resurfaces because Walt ends up going to 
a so I don't remember what the surgery was for. My apologies. I don't remember what the surgery was for. He was going through some sort of procedure. He was a little bit high. Skylar ends up asking if Walt brought his cell phone. Walter ends up telling her which one. So then the marriage tensions are brought right back up after that. And uh, Walter's a little bit of an idiot. If you had all those secrets to keep, why would you go with your wife there? Doesn't make any sense to me. Skylar ends up investigating further and figuring out that Walter didn't even, didn't even, um, excuse me, go visit his mother. She found out everything. Everything was a lie. She was thinking it over and she realized she was being completely, completely bs the entire time. So she ends up threatening to leave Walter, where she technically does leave Walter. She asked him to leave the house. But before that, we're then brought back to Jane's father, who is all going crazy about her death, ends up being a air traffic controller. <laughs> and he ends up making two planes collide with one another. I don't know why you would go to work after having your daughter die. That doesn't make any sense. Shame on him. He uh, Does anything happen to him? I don't remember off the top of my head. I'll have to remember when I jot down the notes after that. It doesn't really matter. So anyways, after that, the two planes collapse. Walter's sitting in his backyard watching the two planes explode, falling down, and we figure out what the pink teddy bear was all about. The pink teddy bear lands in the pool, and I remember sitting back with my mom. We were going, oh, my God, that's it. That's it. That's what the pink teddy bear was every single episode that we were trying to figure out. <laughs> The pink teddy bear ends up being inside Walter's pool, and that's what it all is. And that closes up the season. It was a fantastic season. I can't wait to talk about season three. I'm going to be going through every single season of Breaking Bad, so stay tuned, guys. Subscribe. We have some tier list videos. Check out, in the meantime, this old recap I did when I was initially rewatching the series on season one. But regardless, it still stands. It was a great, great time all around. Thank you so much for being here, guys. Take care.